Hello scientists! Welcome to the Great Camp Sagamores Stream Exploration uh, Session. Um, it's got to be one of my most favorite sessions to do here. Grandparents and grandchildren love it. We come down to the stream and we investigate the organisms that live in the stream environment. Technically speaking, that's, they're called the aquatic macroinvertebrates. These guys are animals without backbones, but they're the start of the food chain. That fish like this, and great blue herons and loons, and all the fish-eating animals like otters depend upon that food chain of something eating something eating something that becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. So we're going to explore here at the stream. Let me give you an, an idea of what the stream looks like in here. You've never been here before. But we have our stream here coming out of the Sagamore Lake and we delve into it going across getting wet sometimes even falling in and trying to capture these critters that tell us something about the food chain there so I should delve into a little bit about equipment because since you can't come to the to Sagamore this summer and do the explorations with me and the other Sagamore staff um, these are things you can do even without me. You don't need me. Maybe I can give you some inspiration, but here's some of the equipment that I have. I like to get a tub like this so I can put some water in it. And one of the first things I've made is I've taken egg cartons and I've cut out the bottom, cut out the egg. I painted them just so they look um, more scientific. And then there's a view through these where you can look down into the water. Here's an example of it. Let's go down to the water's edge. And I take my tripod here. And if we look at the water here, look at all that glare. It becomes hard to see what's in the water um, because all that glare. But underneath the water is all kinds of substrate. Mostly the rock material in this Adirondack stream. So if I take a look at this and I go down into the water, you can begin to see that we can see some of the things at the bottom. Let's see, well, let's pick out something easy to see, like my shoe right there. Okay, without that, it's pretty hard to see my shoe because of that, but then if I look right there, I can see right there, and we might be able to spot some organisms. Actually, the way it would work is, you would put this right up to your eye like this so you can look into the water like that. Well, that's a simple bit of equipment. None of these things are very expensive, so young scientists, um, you can sort of save items and reuse them like my creature uncamouflage containers. It's my creature uncamouflage container over in here and I'm saving up um, um, yogurt tubs, margarine tubs, so I have a white container so that the animals are uncamouflaged. I use spoons and artist brushes like this to be able to catch things. We'll see that in a moment. And again, it's a creature uncamouflage capturing device. Capturing over in here. So very simple equipment. But of course, one of the most basic equipments is you need some kind of net. Well, one of my nets we could use. Uh, obviously, you can buy different kinds of nets. But um, simple nets like this. But when I'm working with lots of people here at Sagamore, I like to use old kitchen strainers, just like this kitchen strainer over in here. And matter of fact, in a moment, I'm going to go into the stream and see if I can find any kind of critters, catch some things for us to investigate. So let me get this camera set up so we can look into the stream. And finally, the last thing here at Sagamore, because we're wading through the stream where it's easy to lose your balance and fall, is that um, I've had many a grandparent or grandchild have something captured in here like a crayfish and then splash off swims the crayfish they're lost so I've taken to using reusing again here's a peanut butter jar I've got a screw on top so that I can hold on to it and um, anything that's captured won't spill into the water so what happens is we come on over here and we wade into the stream to try to catch things. So let me see, I've got to spin my camera around over in here. Let's go over here so you can watch me 
Now, don't laugh too much if I take a tumble in. I've already been in there a bit. If I splash in there, well, it's a story to tell. So, let me get over in here. And one of the first things to do is to look under rocks. Try to grab some rocks um, because there's a, an insect that really tells us a lot about the stream ecology, and that's the stoneflies. When I find stoneflies, I know we've got a very biologically healthy stream. So over in here, you pick up a rock like this. And oh, let me get a smaller size rock that's not unmanageable. And a rock like this. And oh, right there are some stoneflies. So I'll come in and be able to capture some of those guys. And here are some of the stoneflies that were there. Let's see if we can get a look at them. These stoneflies, these are the critters that tell us the stream is very biologically healthy. So I've captured some of those guys. Um, let's see what else if I can get a crayfish on the other side, which means cross getting on over and then trying to see if I can catch anything there. Let me get some water ready for this guy over in here. And I'm gonna head on over and let's see what we can find trying to catch some things. It's a rocky bottom, so you have to watch care walk carefully. Sometimes actually having a walking stick might help too. Getting across. And of course, a lot of the activity is are the grandchildren up and down the stream looking for whatever might be under the rocks. And the favorite thing to catch are the crayfish. Some people call them crabs. They're better known as crayfish. Another name is crawdad. And the cross on here. And over in here, and we start looking underneath rocks. Nothing there. Oop, I think we got something here. Coming across the stream, you're feeling as much with your feet as actually stepping, trying to make sure you have a nice solid footing. And I did find a crayfish underneath that one rock. Right over in here, you can maybe see it inside. There's a crayfish. We'll get another look at it. The technique is you get the crayfish, you lift up a rock, you see where the crayfish is, you try to 
put the net down and you guide it slowly because the crayfish will back away from you. And if you're lucky, they back into here and you scoop up and catch them. The third technique is to go into the water, find a spot where there's sort of muddy and materials on the bottom, dead plant material, stir it up and the water will wash critters down into the net. So over in here, I come like this and look for a spot like right over in here on the edge. I see some rocks with some things that might be hiding under it. I take the net, put it down underneath and stir it up to see if I've caught any critters. And bring it, oh, I got a dragonfly. Here is a dragonfly in here. Let's see who we've got over in here. So we've been catching some critters here. Here is the dragonfly. Let's see if I can scoop into it and see if you can spot it. That was in the hiding in the plant material. There's a dragonfly. And let's see here. Zoom down in like this. And oh, maybe I'm going to use, let's see if I can use my viewer like this where you can see maybe that dragonfly oh, it's too dark let me catch it and bring it out and put it into my creature uncamouflage container so let's hold it like this here let me tip this down and give you a chance to see how i would be catching some of these critters right down in the bottom of the tub got to adjust the tripod get us down in close and these critters of course they are using camouflage to hide their colors blend in they hide in the substrate and materials um, every animal needs three things from their habitat food water and shelter so over in here we've gotten some critters that were captured let me see oh and tip this forward some more get it right down to where we're right into the tub with the camera I can see that one dragonfly moving around and there's some other things that I've caught previously as we're trying to I was trying to get specimens for us to investigate and okay so let's right over in here let's see if I can get us like right like that and let me get this over to here and oh, let's see yeah, can I even put this in maybe I can get it in like this I'll have to drop down the one leg there and one leg here let's see because I need two hands to be able to operate to catch this critter in the tub so over in here let's see where's that dragonfly moving around uh, I'm gonna switch it to a smaller t a smaller screen and then that way we'll have a better chance of maybe seeing it let me switch it over and there's a dragonfly I see him he's still there no not this big thing that's a cone from a spruce tree right over in here Here's a cone from a spruce tree. Let me get that cone out and some of these other things. And right there's the dragonfly. See it swimming around? See if I can get it under the spoon. Right there it is. That is a dragonfly nymph. This guy will grow into one of those dragonflies that you're familiar seeing flying around the pond. So we have over in here this dragonfly. Let me put him in my creature uncamouflage tub. And you can see why these uncamouflage tubs work. Right now the dragonfly is playing dead. It's like saying, oh, I'm going to hide over here on the bottom. But once it starts moving up and what do I have over in here? I have an exoskeleton from a stonefly. We'll get to them. So the dragonfly is a hunter in the water. It's a hunter when it's flying around. So there's one of our species we have. And then over in here that I had caught before on that big rock are some stoneflies. So these are young ones. These will go through. They're feeding upon um, organisms that are in the water. 
they are very flattened bodied so they can hang on to the rocks they actually hold on to the rocks and they then the streams don't don't wash them off but when they get too big for their exoskeleton they'll shed and then um, have a bigger exoskeleton but eventually they're big enough that they'll become the adult insect and fly away and when they do that they do their last shedding and here is the shed exoskeleton of a stonefly that has left the pond, left the stream, and is now an adult stonefly flying around someplace. Of course, looking for a mate and reproducing. Look at the size difference between these guys. That's how much they're going to grow over the span of several weeks. And there'll be several uh, broods of stoneflies that will grow in this stream and they'll become food for fish the fish will become food for otters and it's a food chain so let's see who else matter of fact here is a here is a fish and this so that is the stoneflies are an indicator species telling us that um, there's plenty of oxygen for fish like trout when you have fish in a situation where there's low oxygen, they can't survive. They, their gills take the oxygen out of the water. Warm water and water that has lots of nutrients in it that cause plants to grow and then the plants decompose, that has less oxygen for some of the fish species. So we have that there. And one other big guy that I caught on this rock over in here, this is a... Um, it's a fish fly larva. So let's switch over to this one over in here. And here's a rock that I pulled out. And let's see if I can find this guy. He's big. Right there he is on the bottom right there. Let me get him. I'm going to put this rock over in here because I'm sure there's probably some stone flies on that guy right there. And here is this fish fly larva right in here. These guys. Yeah. Come on, fish fly larva. Right there, look at right there. He's about, this guy is almost ready to leave the pond, the stream um, and become the adult fly. The stream is a safe place to grow up in because, well, there are predators, there's fish and things like that, but there's plenty of hiding spaces. If you're flying around in the air, you're exposed to danger and birds will pick you off. Nighttime flyers get picked off by bats. So, um, being in the water to grow up in is advantageous. So one last guy over in here that we caught was a crayfish. Here is a tiny little baby crayfish. See if I can get him into this tub. He's over in here. He doesn't like to go into the whiteness of the tub. But right here is a young crayfish hatched probably this spring. And um, it's going to grow and become <coughs> as big as or even bigger than the crayfish I caught <coughs> in this jar that I caught before. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I swallowed a bug. Let me open up the jar over here. You can see this crayfish over here. And we have one other crayfish over. And let me let these guys go over in here. And oh, there's one stonefly stuck in there. I don't want him to get stuck. You got to make sure there's nothing stuck on the bottom because that water is sort of like a suction cup. And let's get this crayfish in here. We'll get this other crayfish. He's over in this tub. Let's see if I can find him. And I'll put that fish fly back over in here. There's that fish fly moving around. And right here is this other crayfish. Don't want to get this little guy because I have to watch it. The big crayfish might even eat these little crayfishes. They are definitely predators. They'll feed on other animals. And of course, there are also scavengers feeding on dead things that are in the water. So we have two crayfishes. And what becomes, these guys are pretty small compared to some of the crayfish we can catch in here. Sometimes you get crayfish, these guys are what, look at compared to my finger, how big they are. We'll get crayfish that are three times bigger than this. But one of the things I do um, as a wrap up is we have a crayfish race. The crayfish race down to the water. And you're thinking, George, what do you mean the crayfish race down the water? They're water animals. Well, crayfish like this can actually climb on land. I've actually seen crayfish um, up here in the upper parking lot where they've left the stream and cl cl climbed up this hillside to escape from whatever is in the stream that they want to get to. Where they're going, I have no idea. So, here goes. 
I'm gonna put them right down in here and we'll see the crayfish race down to the stream. There they go. And let's see over in here, let's see if I can follow them with the camera. And right there's one crayfish right there is crawling along. Here's the other crayfish crawling along right there. I don't know who's gonna win. I think the little guy's gonna win. He's taking a quicker route. Oh no, he's gonna get stuck over in here. No worries, he can get through that. Here's the big guy. He's almost gonna be make it to the water in a moment. And he's hiding underneath the stick, I think. There he is. Here's that little guy over in here. Here's the big guy over here. There he goes. And he's making his way to the water. Watch him, here's this little one. Oh, it's gonna be a tie, I think. Sometimes they go down backwards, sometimes they go down forwards. And I think the big guy is going to win this race. There he is. And the big guy is entering the water, and there he is. They can go on land for surprising distances. Matter of fact, there's one species of crayfish that lives in streams that dry up, and they tunnel into the mud when the season dries up, and they sleep. It's called estivating. They sleep in the mud until a rainstorm fills up the pond with water, or the stream with water, and comes out to do his thing. And there's that crayfish just hanging there. The other guy I can't even see. He's already found a hiding place, hiding under rocks, trying to stay protected from from food that they might be uh, animals that might eat them. So the last thing we do then is, of course, we let these guys go. Where do they belong? All these critters belong in the, in the stream environment. One last look, there's the fish fly larva. There's the exoskeletons from the stone flies. There's a water strider, we catch a lot of them. They stand on the surface of the water and they stride along. Some people call them water skaters. There's some uh, stone flies in the bottom there. We won't even be able to find the dragonfly in here, hiding underneath over there. So the first thing let me let go is, let me wash these off so that there's nothing on the nets. So I wash them off like that. And let's take this rock, and which has a water stride around the surface. Let's put this rock in the water. And then, I'm gonna put the camera back on the tripod so I have both my hands so we can, um, so I can get the, everything back in the water there, where they belong, that's their habitat. Oops, over right in here like this. Okay, so you can watch me as I return them to the water environment. Over in here, the first tub, come back in and carefully put them in. Usually I have the kids, the grandchildren help me out doing this. They like to release everything. Wash it all off to make sure nothing's caught inside of it. It's all empty there. And the last tub over in here, I'll put into the water like this. Let these guys go. Swirl it around, make sure nothing's stuck in it. And our time here at the pond, at the stream here at Sagamore is done. I hope you had an interesting time watching this. Maybe next year you'll be here at Sagamore where you'll actually come down to the stream and you'll help me catch these critters. And we'll learn about all these things that live in this stream environment and answer some of the questions that scientists have about an ecosystem. Questions like, who is who? And what do they do? And how do they grow? And where do they go?